In this video, I'm going to talk about how economic stagnation influenced the Soviet Union during the Cold War. First of all, we need to understand the term stagnation. Stagnation is a long period of slow or negative growth. We will learn more about the economical situation of the Soviet Union before the economic stagnation. In 1961, Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev told the Party Congress that the USSR would achieve full communism within 20 years. Khrushchev was gone within three years, however, and replaced by a collective headed by Leonid Brezhnev. Under this new leadership, the Soviet government implemented decentralized market-based reforms aimed at improving growth of the Soviet Union. The reforms were in initially successful and the Soviet Union prospered for a time period. The Soviet economy peaked in the early 1970s after its gross national product grew by 5% e each year since 1965. The decade that followed, however, was truly disastrous. It is often uh, referred to as uh, the era of stagnation, and it is this time period we are going to focus on. Despite earlier reforms, the Soviet economy in the 1970s remained a highly centralized command economy. A centrally planned economy is an economic system in which the state or government makes uh, economic decisions rather than these being made by the interaction between consumers and uh, businesses. Production priorities and plans were announced in five-year plans. Specific targets and quotas were formulated by economic planners, planners in Moscow, and they were reviewed and managed by Soviet bureaucrats at regional and local levels. In my opinion, this uh, economical system contained little flexibility or scope for local decision-making. As the Soviet economy grew, its centra centralized decision-making and bureaucracy became problematic. To cope with the needs of economic management, the number of bureaucrats and clerical workers grew at a much faster pace than uh, the skilled and industrial workers responsible for production. The Soviet bureaucracy had grown too top-heavy, while the Soviet economy was becoming too complex to be centrally managed from Moscow. In 1965, Soviet uh, uh, Premier Alexei Kosygin proposed a series of reforms drafted by Alexei Lieberman, an Ukrainian eco economist. Lieberman suggested decentralizing the economy and reintroducing profit as an incentive for work units. Some of these changes were introduced in agriculture and the light industry, though Lieberman's reforms were never fully implemented. Nevertheless, these changes stimulated the Soviet economy, which enjoyed its best period between 1965 and 1972. The Rise of Stagnation By the mid-1970s, however, the Soviet economy was beginning to suffer from contraction and low growth. Some of this was caused by changes in the international sphere, such as the United States' abandonment of the gold standard in 1971 and the OPEC oil crisis in 1973, but I, I think that structural domestic problems were more to blame than these international events. The Soviet economy had endured years of massive military spending, shortfalls in natural resources, um, bureaucratic mismanagement and rising corruption were significant factors to uh, this uh, economic stagnation. The Soviet Union's rapid Industrial and technological growth had come at the expense of its agricultural sector and the nation was struggling to feed its own um, um, citizens and had to import food from other countries, which was really humiliating and embarrassing in um, the international forum. The import of grains from uh, other countries caused a serious trade deficit uh, for the Soviet Union. Major economic reform was clearly needed, but there was an inadequate political support for such a step. The Kremlin's habit of micromanaging the economy meant that new projects and policies were slow to be approved. The government's only significant economic reform of the early 1980s was a series of anti-corruption measures. In 1986, the Soviet economy was dealt a further blow following a devastating ex accident at Chernobyl, Ukraine.
The gremlin faced a human environmental disaster of immense proportions from the nuclear disaster in Ukraine. Scientists and engineers raced to construct a con concrete sarcophagus around the damaged reactor to prevent the escape of further re radioactivity. Vast areas of contaminated agricultural land was cleared and, li and thousands of livestock were destroyed. The economic costs of Chernobyl are believed to have approached 20 billion rubles, a price the Soviet government couldn't afford in the 1980s. The occupation of Afghanistan um, was also a significant factor in the economic stagnation in the Soviet Union. Finally, by the early 1980s, many Soviet experts and politicians accepted that major reforms were needed to kickstart the ailing economy of the Soviet Union. This was easier said than done, however. Any significant reforms must be accepted and endorsed by the Communist Party and the Soviet government, where communist hardliners held sway. The reform agenda would require strong, skillful, and dynamic leadership qualities missing from the Soviet hierarchy in the late 1970s and early 1980s. In 1985, Mikhail Gorbachev took over in the Soviet Union and introduced reform. To conclude, the Soviet economy thrived for a brief period between 1965 and the 1970s. However, centralized planning and control hindered further growth and the economy began to contract. Economic stagnation produced a decline in Soviet living standards, which were already lower than those of the West, as food and consumer goods became increasingly scarce. Other factors also had a detrimental effect on the Soviet economy, such as the 1973 oil crisis, the ongoing Soviet occupation of Afghanistan, and the 1986 Chernobyl disaster. By the early mid mid 1980s, it was clear that major reforms were required if the Soviet economy was ever to recover. A succession of conservative leaders achieved little. In 1985, the Politburo elected Mikhail Gorbachev, a comparatively young leader with a history of successful administration and reform. The end of the Cold War was brought about in part by the decline of the Soviet Union, which was caused by a long period of economic stagnation in the 1970s and 1980s. Thanks for listening. In the end, I want to add some of my reflections around this topic. I think that the Soviet Union would have fared much better in this uh, time period if they had uh, had a, a market economy instead of the centrally planned economy. A pure planned economy has only one personal group who controls what is produced and all business work together to produce goods and services that are distributed by the government. And this type of system um, that the Soviet Union had um, is highly uh, inflexible and uh, the reason they employed this system is that they wanted to avoid unemployment but these systems are tend to be uh, not that uh, as successful as uh, other uh, economic systems like uh, the market economy um, uh, which is one that is um, free of external control individuals are left up to themselves to decide what to produce who to work for and how to get the things they need and because of this they do not need to wait for a word from the government before changing their output. Companies and their market economies can quickly keep up with fluctuations fluctuations in the economy and um, this tends to be more efficient than regulated markets. So as I said the Soviet Union would have fared much better with a market economy uh, as for example the US had. Uh, and this would at least have hindered the collapse uh, that they faced uh, in the end of this uh, era of stagnation.